How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Box to Box. It's Wolves Saturday night kickoff, 7 30 pm. And listen, we've got no time to dwell on poor results gone in the last week or so. We're out of the Champions League and we've given City the advantage in the title race. Two points behind now. We have to hope that City drop points, but we have to make sure we don't in order for any potential City drop points to matter in our favour. As you can see, I've got Dave back in the building from Talking Wolves. Um, listen, he was here last time out, and I'm sure he's going to be here next time out too. Dave, how are you doing, my guy? I'm all good, thanks, Turkish man. Thanks for having me back on the channel. No worries, man. No worries. It's a pleasure to have you on, man. A good all-round perspective of football as well. So talk to me, man. I just mentioned Arsenal's last week or so, um, a nightmare week. It was only a couple of weeks ago. People were labelling us the best team in the league. And now, you know, we're just shy off the top, Man City. And we're out of Europe. Um, as a neutral, how do you, you know, weigh in? What's your opinions of it all? Yeah, I think, and I hope as a neutral, there's still some twists and turns to go. Um, and I'm sure Arsenal fans will feel the same. Um, I think after the last couple of weeks of results and including the Champions League result, as Arsenal fans, you probably, you are going to feel down and quite negative about the rest of the season. But ultimately, you know, with the, with the strong goal difference that you have, all it takes is for... City just to drop points, whether that's even drawing a game, and you guys obviously winning the match, and you know you you back, you got the upper hand again. So I think there's a long way to go. Look, I think you've got some tricky fixtures coming up. Looking at your your sort of fixture list, but you know Arsenal have been very very good this season, and and you know been very strong against the the top four. So uh, mate, I, I think there's still there's still still some twists and turns to go. So I wouldn't be too downbeat just yet uh, if you were an Arsenal fan. Yeah, no, I, listen, I, I don't think it's over. It, we've left it, we've left it, you know, with a lot to do because I think yeah. that when you look at a couple of the fixtures Arsenal got coming up with Tottenham away, United away, if Arsenal win all their games, I think we actually go on to win the league because I think City will drop points in at least one. It's just that I don't think we will win the rest of our games, especially with the the dark cloud forming. Now, it, it's not a dark cloud like previous seasons we've seen, you know, top four battles and finishing sixth and eighth and so on. But yeah. it was a season, again, that promised so much that might end with, with so little or nothing at all. Um, you've still got something to play for as well, Dave. You know, someone said to me that Wolves haven't really got anything to play for. Well, when I look at the table and I look at that eighth place position, is that something you're looking I think I think it's probably maybe a step too far now for Wolves, if I'm honest. Um, it was a couple of weeks ago we played West Ham, and at the time, obviously, we were knocked out in the FA Cup a few weeks ago against Coventry, which you know was was a, was a crazy game for the neutral, really. But after that, I think there was a lot of Wolves fans really disappointed with how um, that had ended and thought, you know, what the season's done, only because there was there wasn't a lot separating us in sort of seventh place. But you still had Brighton, West Ham, Chelsea were coming back into it, Newcastle. I think there was just almost too much quality ahead of us. But then when we played against West Ham, they were in seventh place. We were three points behind them, better goal difference, and and had a game in hand. So I thought, if we win this game, we go up to seventh. You know, we, we're laughing, but frustratingly, yeah. you know, with VAR decision went against us as well right at the end. Um, we lost out in that game and we slowed down a little bit. We've been unlucky with injuries, but... I don't know, and it, it, we still we still got yourselves to play. We still got to play City. We still got to play Liverpool. It's going to be very very difficult. So uh, for this season, I think it's um, been good. Bearing in mind, you know, the start of the season, and when I spoke to you last, you know, Gary O'Neill had come in on no preseason, no notice, and a lot of neutral football fans thought that Wolves were going to go be relegated and go down. The fact that we're still sort of mid-table and with four or five weeks to go, we can still talk about the potential of Europe just says how, how good a job he's done, really. So, yeah, I think it's too soon for Europe this year, but ultimately we've had a very decent season considering what happened at the start of the year. Yeah, yeah, and you mentioned one there, Neto, that tends to get mentioned every season, but, you know, be similar to... Uh, the chance to kick on with the injuries that he's had over his time. Um, it's been another stop-start kind of season, but another season where he's shown that he, he is a top, top talent as long as he can put these injuries behind him. And do, do you have any hope that he does or do you think he's just one of these players that's going to have this problem for, for the foreseeable future? It's so frustrating with, with Neto because, I mean, you guys have been linked with him for the last two or three years and... He's always the best player in preseason. For the last two or three years, he's been our best player by far. And you think, 
is this the year? Can we keep Neto fit? Can he really, really kick on? And I think it was two years ago. Um, he actually st- he actually started that season injured. Last year, he had a really good preseason, and you guys were really heavily linked with him. And we kept hold of him after like three or four games. He was out injured until the new year. This season, he stayed fit for a long amount of time, and he really kicked on. He was so, so good. And I thought, right, this is finally the year. Got to about November, picked up an injury, and was out until the new year. Big loss. Came back for a little bit, got injured again. So Wolves are hoping that he's going to be back for the last few games, but it's so frustrating. And I think for a club like Wolves, obviously these top players, we do need to rely on them to, if we want to grow as a club, ultimately he's going to end up leaving and we'll recoup the money and have to spend it on other players. But with these injuries, obviously it does restrict a little bit what we can sell him for. I don't think he'll be a Wolves player next year. But I certainly think it's going to, you know, because of the injuries, it'll knock a good 20 plus million off what, what Wolves would have wanted maybe in November for him. So um, I'd love to keep him. But ultimately, if I can, oh, obviously I'm not the chairman of Wolves, but if I'm the director of football or whatever, and I think I can get 40, 45 million, I'd probably cash in only because I think you could probably get a player, maybe not quite as good as, as Neto, but if he's available 40 50 percent more than what Neto is yeah it's a it's a no-brainer really unbelievable football and I think he'd be an asset again for top teams but the injury record is you know a, a huge concern for anyone really so you said you don't expect Neto to be here next season which I can't like surprised me because it's been another stop start season for him but it must have put off potential suitors as well because I you know a couple of years ago people would have thought that the next step up might have been an Arsenal or a side you know firmly in top four now, would it be a case of joining the side that's challenging for a top four position, maybe a, a Tottenham, you know, dare I say a Chelsea? I mean, where, where do you see his potential future? I still think he's got the quality to to play for a top four team. It's just that I think, especially in the Premier League, would the likes of Arsenal, City, would they would they take a punt on him? I, I don't mean they've got room to, to gamble on him, really. So I've, I, it'll be interesting. I think Chelsea... Would spend the money, Spurs, maybe not so, but although I could see him, him playing there. So yeah. I'm not sure. I'd be really, really intrigued. I'd, I'd even be interested to see with the links that someone like PSG have because they've got the whole Portuguese thing with George Mendes as well. Even oh, if yeah. Mbappe moves on, if it, it go there. But like I said earlier, for whoever he joins, it's a gamble. But with that risk, you are getting a very, very good footballer. So you've just got to weigh up the, the pros and cons of it, really. But I would be intrigued. I mean, George Mendes even made comments... I mean, you know, he's got a lot of lovers, he's got a lot of haters, but he even made comments that without injuries, he thinks Pedro Neto would have been one of his most valuable clients in the world right now. He really, he had the potential to be very, you know, a very good player. And I still think he does. Just gotta, he's just got to stay fit. I think he's only 24 still. He's got a lot of Premier League experience behind him. You know, he's been at Wolves for five or six yeah. years now. So um, I think that's quite valuable as well. 100%, 100%. Back, oh, back to proceedings this coming weekend. Um you're the home team. So how do you envision, you know, you set up? Do you think you're going to go for it considering Arsenal's recent form? Or, is it, are, are, you know, are you, would you still be weary of us considering how strong we've been previously to the last three games? I mean, how are you looking at Arsenal this weekend? Is it a wounded animal? You're, you're worried or is it a wounded animal going for the kill? Yeah, and I, I, I sort of have had this discussion with a few people. I think... It'll be intriguing. Arsenal are obviously quite fragile right now, but ultimately the title is still there to be won. So I think even from an Arsenal perspective, I, I think you guys will be intrigued to see how the team reacts to you know what's been going on recently. Yeah. I think Wolves will sit deep. They'll, you know, they'll allow Arsenal a lot of the ball, I think. Um, at Molyneux, that's what we've done. And we've picked up results against City. We've got the double over Chelsea, double over Spurs, you know, by doing that. Um, and frustrated United and Liverpool in the same way as well. So... We'll sit deep, allow Arsenal a lot of the ball, and we'll just wait for those counter-attacking opportunities. Um, and at Molyneux, it's worked quite well. Although without Neto, it might be a slightly, you know, slightly different game. But I think Cunha's definitely got the quality to, you know, frustrate Arsenal as well, getting behind, um, and maybe Juan Chan coming back as well can yeah. offer a bit of a threat as well. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be intrigued. But sort of going back to the game at the Emirates, you know, you guys could have been five or six up at half time and I think it was a frustrating end to that game. So I think Wolves will look to frustrate Arsenal again. Um it could go one of two ways. I think it could be a really enjoyable and successful night for Wolves or it could be a really long evening, one of the two. <laughs> I'm hoping it's a long evening for you both. Um, <laughs> we'll see. I mean I'm gonna ask you now, I'm a key man for Arsenal, who's the biggest threat? But you know, I don't know how we're gonna set up. Does Arteta look at the last few fixtures and say, you know what? 
a couple of these that need to learn a lesson and potentially be dropped to the bench? Or does he say, listen, as much as you've potentially let me down as the manager, let us down as players, let the fans down, this is a last roll of the dice. We are two points behind. We need to go in strong. So bearing in mind the, the lineup is very up in the air at the moment. Who don't who, who wouldn't you want to see in the starting eleven? It's interesting because I think Arsenal, whether they're in form or out of form, you just don't like a lot of the players just add so much quality. I think obviously Declan Rice has been a huge shine for you guys. Erdegaard, yeah. I'm almost happy to see him, you know, as a young player. We've seen so many players and he came onto the scene what when he was like 15, 16, and, and now he's sort of found a place he can call home and really kick it on and being a you know, top, top footballer. Saka is he's obviously an unbelievable player, but I think obviously from the outside looking in, it looks like you know his his contribution has slowed down a little bit. And I think for him, really, in the back of his mind as well, should be I need to probably pick things up because I think he'll be in the Euro squad, no doubt about it. But with an increase of form of like the Foden and even Cole Palmer, Saka's place in the starting lineup for me has probably got a slight question mark over it at the moment. So I think he does need to kick on a little bit more. But against Wolves, he always seems to turn up. I always think he has a fantastic game against Wolves. So Saka's always one that I'm wary of as well. So I think the midfield battle is going to be key, to be fair, mate. I think we, we've got Lamina and probably Jao Gomez. Neither of those started. I think they were both suspended or injured when we played you at the Emirates. But those two against the likes yeah. of uh, Rice and Erdegaard and, and so on, it'll be an int- intriguing battle. Yeah, it will be. And to be honest, I need Saka to have a big game. Um, but again, I don't know if Saka starts the game. Um, listen, mm. you're the home team, Dave. So we'll move on to predictions now. Um, like I said before, still that potential eighth place finish up for grabs, which should bring Conference League. Um, and you're the home team. What are you going for? I'll give you a heart and a head one because <laughs> in, ga- in games like this, I mean, Arsenal are obviously the favourites. And this season, you've gone into, what well, you've only lost five games. So you've gone into the majority of your games knowing that you've got a good chance of winning. Um, so my head is saying that I think Arsenal will win. Both teams to score, but I think Arsenal will win 2-1. Okay. But my heart is just saying Wolves won't sneak it, a 1-0 win. A r- rare for Arsenal not to score, but I've just got a feeling Wolves might uh, nick it. But my head is, my oh. head will norm- normally, is normally right anyway. <laughs> Dave, hey, you say rare. Last two games we haven't scored now, so you know. Yeah. Um, I think I saw a stat in. Uh, I don't know if it was away games or against Wolves in particular. I think you've scored in the last like thirty plus games against Wolves or something daft. So yeah, it, I'd be surprised to see uh, you not score. To be honest, we need to bounce back. We need to. We need to get the win. We need to get it back on track. Man City are not playing in the league, so it's a chance for us to go ahead, albeit with a game extra played. But that's the only thing we can do: keep applying pressure. So. In fact, we play twice before City next play. So if we win our next two games, we're four points above City before they play, which, listen, looking at City's fixture list, you still expect them to win their game. But we have to do what we can do. And what we mm-hmm. can do is go four points clear in the next two games. Um, I'm going to go 3-1. It's a, it's a score I tend to often go with. Not that it often does me any favours, but um, <laughs> I'm going to go with 3-1. I think both teams to score makes sense. I think Cunha uh, might grab one for Wolves. He seems very on it at the moment. Um, but I think it has to click for Arsenal now. And if it doesn't and we don't win against Wolves this Saturday night, it is over. Yeah, but if people didn't think it was over before that, it would be over. Um, Dave, what, are you doing anything else for the game? I know you spoke to James as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So we've got a match preview out on our channel. Uh, spoke to James, so he gave his thoughts on, on the situation as well. Um, and then I'll have all my post-match stuff out after the game as well. So... Uh, if you want to see me sort of upset or upbeat maybe after the game, who knows? Uh, yeah, you can check out our channel. Nice. There you go, people. Go check it out now. James is over there. Preview for the game. And like Dave said, he'll be covering it after the game as well. So hopefully we get a win. But make sure you show Dave some love. And big up to all Thank the you, It's in the title. It's in the description. Click it, subscribe, and show them love. Hit the like button here as well. Leave us your thoughts, predictions, lineups. Should we do wholesale changes? Or is it the last roll of the dice this season for this team? And they must stand up this weekend, Saturday, 7.30 kickoff. We will be there. Make sure you're here too, people. Hit the like button. Love for the love as always. Peace.